Well, there is Celtic Park, home of Celtic Football Club. We're in the Emirates Arena next door for day two of the Badminton World Championships. What a performance for Hong Kong in the mixed doubles. We just saw Lee Chun Hei and Chow Hoi Wa progress to round three. Next match up is a women's singles. We've got the number nine seed Chen Yu Fei from China. She's up against another player from Chinese Taipei, Pai Yu Po. Well, a quick look at the very top of the women's singles draw, that section of eight. Well, you can see how tough it is. Chen Yu Fei, Pai Yu Po, one of them is going to face either Akani Yamaguchi or Lena Kersfeldt in the next round. That particular match is up again in just a few matches time here live on court one as well. So we'll see how that section of the draw progresses live for you right here. Well, there's Chen Yufei leading us out, world junior champion. And her opponent in red, Pai Yupo. So players ready and waiting, the court officials in place. Let's see what happens with your important That's toss the red side. Point. That's the black side. What's your choice? The red side, so I'm going to flip this here. Black it is. So you're going to receive. What side do you prefer? So five, you're going to go on my right. So Chen Yufei of China in white at the top of the screen will be starting the match at the far side. Nineteen years of age. She's currently ranked number 11 in the world. A terrific start to her senior career in badminton. Within the top 10 so early, she was up at number eight just a couple of months ago. Of course, seeded here at number nine seed, she had a bye yesterday in round one, progressing straight through to start the tournament in round two. Her opponent from Chinese Taipei. Taipei City, Pai Yu Po, 26 years of age. Currently ranked 57 in the world, unseeded here at the World Championships. Her highest career ranking at number 20, that was back in June 2015. So she's a couple of years past her peak. Let's see what kind of form she's in this week. Well, that first round match against Nana Vainio from Finland, straight games just in half an hour, looking dominant with that scoreline, 21-13, 21-11 yesterday. Ready to play? This is the first time these two players have met in international competition, so no head-to-head -to, -head to speak of. There's our umpire from Canada for today's women's singles match, Eric Desroche. The service judge back again from yesterday, Elaine Kong from the USA. Well, I've been very impressed, Steen, with the performances of Chen Yufei in particular over the last year or so. I watched her at the World Junior Championships last year. Have you seen her play much? Uh, yeah, I saw her play in um, uh, Swiss Open. I think it was Swiss or German Open when she played an all Chinese affair against uh, Chen Xiaoxin. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, lost that right, match. Uh, it must have been Pai Swiss Open then. Po, Chinese Taipei. And on my left, Chu Yufei, China. Pai Yupo to serve. Love all. 
playing. So Pai Yu Pei with the first serve in red from Taipei at the bottom of your screens. Check. Great straight smash, great accuracy. One low. Slightly passive start, perhaps, from Chen Yufei of China in that opening rally. She's one of the most economical women singles players I've seen at just 19 years of age. She covers the court so well, and she seems so wise and almost experienced in the style of play she has seen so far that I've witnessed. A very clever player for such a young age. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to follow her in the years to come. was commentating at those World Junior Championships last summer in Bilbao. Chen Yufei, Two, if I remember one. rightly, I don't think she dropped a single game the entire week in the women's singles. Very dominant in, indeed. Good shot there. Yeah, I think we're in for an interesting match. Um, Pai has Pai. earlier showed uh, that she definitely has potential. Um, her oh. form has dipped a little bit, but um, there's no doubt that she uh, knows how to play women's singles. And um, on the Chinese side, I think actually that the most uh, interesting thing is on the coach's chair where the uh, former Oli double Olympic gold medalist Jiang Ning, former world champion Jiang Ning, is uh, back on the coach's chair. Yeah, really good to see more. Well, some of the yeah. best you could ask for, really, in coaching. Three, there she is. Two. After the Olympics in um, London in 2012, um, she's had a break from. Uh, Traveling with the uh, best players of China. Uh, was of course, um, very successful in 2012 when Li Shirui won the uh, Olympic gold. Good backhand kill from Pai Yu Po. Well constructed rally Three. from her. Oh. And uh, I, I, have, I must say, I have really high regards for, for Zhang Ning as a coach. So, here's the Coach from Chinese Taipei. Not too shabby either as the uh, number one rank, rank player in the world. Good shot. Yeah, not too shabby indeed. Four, yeah, Zhang Ning. Three. Seen her around a few of these internationals over the last nine months or so, so it's good to see her back on the coaching staff for women's singles in China. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, they have definitely the, uh, not definitely, but they have some of the youngest players, uh, China, with the Chen Yufei, Chen Xiaoxin, Herping Zhao, um, even though Five, she's a, been a regular on the Super Series circuit, and she's still young in my opinion. Um, so, exciting players, but, but they've... Um, They've had to regroup a bit after the uh, Rio Olympics, where Wang Yihan has retired, of course. Uh, Wang Shishan also retired. Uh, yeah, Li Xuerei, is she still playing? Six, Li Xuerei suffered that uh, terrible injury in the uh, semi-final against Kalina Marin in, uh, in Rio. And um, the word is that, that she's um, uh, recovered, but um, I haven't seen her play a uh, tournament. She might have played a tournament that I've just yeah. not been aware of. Over, over. Four, six. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, Steen, that um, those three women singles players from China were almost dominating, certainly three of the top five ranked players in the world for some time. So 
So just another example of where things are changing slightly in dominance of Chinese badminton. Yeah, it's been um, it's been six years since they won a world championship. Seven, four. In London, Wang Yi Hunt. Only won two out of the last 12 medals, and both of them was Li Shurui in um, losing finals against first Rajana Ginton and then Kaolina Marin. So um, there's, there's definitely a little gap in, uh, in Chinese Five, women's singles, seven. but uh, I'll bet that they're working really, really hard to close it. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned Carolina Marin there. Um, the last World Championships 2015. Carolina Marin, it was that uh, knocked out Pai Yu Po on the Thursday of that event. So, what was that? Perhaps it, round three. But that went all the yeah. way to 21 17 in the third. So, yeah, so that, that's exactly what shows that Pai Seven, knows oh. how to play and she's not to be taken lightly by. Um, Chen Fei, she really had uh, Marin in trouble in that tournament. Played extremely well. Oh, great net shot from Pai Yu Po. Eight, seven. Not just the spin, but catching the top of the tape, very difficult for Chen Fei to pick that one up. Almost ended up on court number three, in fact. Once more from Pai Yu Po. Line judge. Line judge. Accuracy over power here. Five. Ten. Ten. Can you show? Can you show him? Show him exactly where. Yeah, and then you can. Uh, Thank you, sir. Power. Yeah, so we see the court being well, power might be one of the um, uh, keywords for the Chinese women's singles because um, it seems that they could still use a bit of power in a number of the Chinese women's singles. Uh, I, I, I have them as uh, really, really deep outsiders in th this tournament because uh, I, I think they can play, they have potential, but, but they're not that powerful yet. And, and we've seen that, that women's singles have become quite uh, powerful. It's both become powerful, but it's also become really, really technical with super technicians um, dominating the tournaments and, and so many different playing styles and playing oh. types. Very, very enjoyable to watch Arizona. women's singles at the moment. Eight, nine. Yeah, I agree, Steen. I think it's actually perhaps my favorite type of badminton to commentate on. I was uh, chatting with somebody last year at an event about how Japan, for example, have got so many players within the world's top 40 and again within the world's top 80 yeah. in both women's singles and women's doubles. But in particular, watching how some of these women's singles players, and on that occasion it was from Japan, were able to get into deep lunging positions almost out of position and yet recover. Nine, I think oh. there's so much to be said for the athletic ability and the power like you mentioned of some of these players that elevates them above let's say the average player that comes out of Europe in women's singles do you think there's something different about how they train in China how they train in Japan and these countries compared to how we do over here for Ten, example in nine. the UK or in Denmark yes I think there are I think they practice a lot more simple as that yeah but uh, I mean, there's players from Europe that also um, 
plays well, and we've seen that the Marin has been dominant in the big tournament for the last three years. And I know that she's practicing a lot. Um, she's practicing really, really hard, trying to combine the best of Asian and European style. Um, so it, it's not like because you're born in Asia, you get some kind of special uh, gift at birth, and, and that you can become a fantastic badminton player or. Uh, it's about what you do and, and what kind of environment you have. We, we discussed it a little bit yesterday when we saw some um, nice efforts by uh, Ahmed uh, Salah in men's singles from Egypt. So uh, you, you've got to have the right um, guidance, the right influence, the right environment. Oh, there's Can a challenge. Can you pay challenge call in? For well, the score's at 10 Allstein, and we've got a challenge by Chen Yufei. Uh, I must admit, I, I thought that was clearly in. Let's take a look at what Hawkeye can offer us. Wow, that was clearly one. Correction out. Well, clearly, perhaps, isn't uh, the perfect word. It was so close to the line, but yes, it was out. And it's Chen Yufei from China with the small advantage at the mid-game interval, the scoreline at 11-10. Yes. I don't know how your Chinese is thinking. Can you follow any of this? Yeah, yeah. She's uh, saying you should play a little bit uh, more to the left-hand side and... Uh, then you have a good chance to attack. <laughs> <laughs> now, nope. Steen, I know you're making things up. Yeah, I have no idea what she's saying, but looking at the body language of uh, Jiang Ning seconds. and also taking into account her uh, merits as double Olympic uh, gold medalist, world champion, she oozes uh, confidence, and, and um, I would really like, if I were the player, I, I would like to have her as a coach because I, th I believe that she knows what she's talking about and, and can help me. And if I'm not winning, well, she's giving me the best chance that she could of winning. That, that's the impression I get when I see that coaching. Well, that's a, exactly right. And I think if, if you've got a coach of that caliber telling you what to do, you know it's the right thing. And therefore, you just trust 100% in that. And you just do it and you're confident about it. Yeah. You, saw, you saw a very different... Um, Both yes and no. Both yes and no, because, I mean... Just because you've been a top player doesn't necessarily make you a good coach. I've seen a lot of <laughs> top players that didn't qualify as, as good coaches, in my opinion. But the chance, the probability that you become a good coach is is uh, much, much higher when you've had this Turn top over. player experience. The and 11, we see it. We can just take a look 12. at the coaches' chairs here in the hall. A number of former top players is there. Uh, but Zhang Ning, she's proven, in my opinion, that she both can play and she's also proven her worth as um, as a coach in in bringing up um, uh, Li Shu Rui to win the Olympics and um, um, yeah, that hold that over. group of players 13, with uh, Wang Yihan and, uh, and so on. Yeah, I think for me, as well, still a current player, it's that confidence you get from believing in a decision so if Zhang Ning has says this is what we're going to do yeah it's it's the fact that you just go okay and I'll do that and over. then you do that to the best of your ability you're confident 13. in that and therefore you play that particular style or shot better yeah and you go from there I think indecision is perhaps the worst thing and if the coaching relationship you've got the communication isn't quite isn't quite there then perhaps you lack that confidence and nothing you seem to do then works yeah. We saw yesterday that mixed doubles with the French. There were elements of that game where both the players and the coach were finding it difficult to communicate with each other and almost debating what to do rather than yeah. just deciding on a style of play. And but I don't mind there's a debate and, and uh, it also depends what kind of players you've got. If you've got really experienced players, then it, it would be foolish of the coach to over. neglect the uh, impression and, and the... Uh, um, feelings that the players have got on court and 
especially if um, the coaching 14, is in a third language, 12. which was the case yesterday, where there was a Dane speaking English to a French pair. And there can be lots of, uh, of things that are lost in translation. Uh, it's really, really difficult to, to coach through a third language. Um, so I don't mind that there's a discussion uh, going on, but of course it depends on the experience level of, of the players. As a young player, Chen Yu Fei, um, I think I would mostly 15, listen to an experienced coach, but but there might be some things that, that she feels that, no, oh, this is not what you see from out there on the coach's chair. I feel it differently on court, and that's important to get that communicated to the coach because he or she is there to help as good as they can. Yeah, absolutely. I think I remember watching, it was men's singles, it was the Dubai Super Series finals, Victor Axelsson, and how he communicates with his coaching staff. He's learned to become a lot more assertive in that aspect, and the coach will say, OK, Victor, tell me what's happening rather than Victor being told, do this or do that, or this isn't working. Yeah. Let's Victor make the decision, and then the coaching would perhaps agree or disagree, so that Victor is leading his decisions and leading his choices about what to do next. Over. So I think you're absolutely 13, right. It's that experience 15. the players will have as to how to balance that communication with the coach. It's all over. Depends on the situation as well. I mean, if you're far behind and it's obvious that you don't have a clue of what's going on, then the coach has to come with some right. idea. But if you're doing quite well and, and things are going well, and there's no need for the coach to interfere and, and risk disturbing anything, um, let the players um, do what they do best. Good yeah, shot, absolutely. good shot. Great cross slice from Chen Yufei. The score line then. Over. 16, 16 13. 13. She's just opening up that gap once more from the mid-game interval now to three points. Shake of the head from Pai Yu Po, but I don't like to see that. I mean, she didn't do all that wrong in that rally. It was just a great shot in the end from Chen Yu Fei. Seventeen, thirteen. Well, a very quick run of points for Chen Yufei suddenly from that mid-game interval at 11-10. She's taken seven of the last ten points. Yeah, and, and we've talked about oh. coaching uh, qualities, so is that a coincidence? I don't think so. 19, it might 13. be. I just... I just think that um, Zhang Ning is good for the Chinese women's singles team. Oh, it's fantastic. That forehand 13, lift was so flat it point. made you Po lays in that rear corner and this backhand taking the pace off the shuttle played to perfection earning Chen Yufei a game point serving at 2013 game and around the head forehand from Pai Yu Po into the net and from 11-10 <laughs> Taking 10 of the next 13 points, Chen Yufei wins the first game in round two, 21 <laughs> Yeah, you can't
And the World Championship in 2003, Jiang Ning, Birmingham. And the Chinese final against uh, Don Rina. Um, two years before that in Seville in 2001, China had won all four medals. And that's 16 years ago, and that was the last time they won all four medals in, in winning seconds. singles. Part 1, 20 seconds. Did it also 20 years ago here in Glasgow. Clean sweep and women's singles. I wonder, Steen, has any other country, to your knowledge, won a clean sweep in a major tournament? Ooh. We might have to come back to that one <laughs> yeah. tomorrow, Second perhaps. <laughs> yeah, we, we might have to uh -oh. uh, call a friend. To, oh, yeah. And I know who I would like to call. <laughs> so do uh, I, I, bet I can ask. Uh, I don't think they have, but if I uh, should come up with a um, oh. possibility, then it would be Indonesia back in the era of um, Susi Susanti, uh, Sawenda Kusuma Wadani, and, and the likes of that. But uh, I don't think well, as China have um, participated since. 83, I don't think there's anyone that's made a clean sweep in a major and would define the majors as the World Championship or the Olympics, at least not in women's singles. No, oh, absolutely. Purple silver, one, all. Tough opposition this week. Steen, we don't have the number one in the world, Tai Su Ying. She was um, she suffered from illness, I remember, back in Australia. Came back to Taipei, was unable to play in the Thai Chinese Taipei Open. But we haven't seen her since, to my knowledge. Is she uh, sick or injured? Do you know? I uh, know she's um, she's chosen um, otherwise than to play here in, uh, Two, in Glasgow. One. She played. Uh, won six consecutive tournaments and had a real, real tough uh, schedule, but played so well. But, um, yeah, not here. Yeah, it's a shame for us and a shame for the World Championships. That's another thing that um, some players choose to be very selective over the tournaments they play. Carolina Marin, for example, in the last couple of years, we don't see her competing as often as some other players in internationals, but she's always in the peak possible Three, position two. when it comes to major events like the Olympics and the World Championships, normally some of the bigger Super Series. Yeah, and as for Marin, uh, it's been due to injuries, so the explanation is quite simple there. Both the World Championships, she um, twisted Three, her ankle in the first oh. match, match against the Paiupo in um, in uh, Jakarta, and uh, first match in Denmark, um, she also twisted her ankle, exact same injury, and uh, managed to finish the tournament, but at a cost, because um, the first year it cost her half a year with um, no or very limited practice, and of course, tournament. Four. Three. Tournament directors um, are really making uh, the best effort to get to come to the tournament. So sometimes perhaps you, you play a little bit earlier than you should, uh, health-wise. Yeah, so much to try and juggle and what priorities to follow really when it comes to oh, the kind of decision. Oh, fantastic shot! Takes so much control to play that. Over silver for all. 
glides across and all the time she's threatening to push it or, or try to kill it on Chen Ufei, but just in the nick of time, twists the racket head and glides across. Beautiful shot. She's really got fantastic technical skills, so Pai Yupo, exactly as a number of the other Chinese Taipei players that we've seen. Over, five, four. Mentioned um, Tai Su Ying, but also uh, the silver medalist from 2011, Cheng Xiaoqie. Also got a bronze in 2005. Absolutely fantastic technical skills. Well, would you believe this, Steen, and this may or may not be correct, we'll see, but I've just had a tweet sent through explaining Service that over. Tai Tzu Ying is contracted Five. to play oh. in the uh, World University Championships, which are currently being hosted in Chinese Taipei. Yeah. And that's why she's not in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. So thank you to Pete Silver, on Twitter six, for sending that through. Five. It's gone wide. And Service over. Six, all. Pai Yupo able to push her shots a little bit more on the far side of the court there. Um, according to the, the drift Seven, that we discussed six. earlier, she's playing a little bit up against the, the wind in the arena. It's not that there's air condition or anything, it's just it's a big arena and doors opening, closing, uh, spectators moving around and so on. Anyway, it means that Chen Yufei has to be a little bit more careful with her shots to the backcourt, whether it's clears or lifts. Excellent rally by Pai Yu Po. Eight, six. <laughs> yeah, much like the beginning of the opening game much closer battle are you po regrouped refocused and uh, at this moment two points in front of chen yu fei who took the opening game great cross block from chen yu fei Look how early Chen Yufei was into the net there, Steen. She was just anticipating Seven, that. Neutralising backhand to the net. Yeah. Over nine seven. Well, what a contest we've got here in this women's singles, these two so. <coughs> Evenly matched Service in these over. longer rallies. Eight, nine. Pai Yu Po just slowing things down, just desperate to try and stay with Chen Yu Fei at the moment. Letting her get away from her, panting on those shorter lifts. Oh. 
Well, great net shot to set up that attacking opportunity from Chen Yufei. Nine, all. Seemed to me, Steen, um, Chen Yufei's lifts and clears a little shorter than the um, opening game. I wonder whether that she's very aware of that little drift in there and she's taking quite a bit off these serves and these lifts just to make sure she doesn't make unforced errors. Ten, yeah, that, that might nine. very well be the case. of wits it seems at the moment in this match neither one of them prepared to give anything away fairly conservative badminton from both just waiting for that opportunity Can drive into the body from Chen Yufei however and she is in front once more at the mid-game interval this time in the second game with a scoreline of 11-9 Court. Ten. Well, pa Yu Po just taking her time Eleven, to get nine. back on court to get action underway. Play. Mid game in the second. Chen Yu Fei leading 11 9 and one game up. Yeah, we'll probably see Chen Yufei trying to play a bit uh, downwards and play to the front court. Only play the back court when she's in really, really good position and can sort of um, 12, manage nine. to think about playing it a little bit more carefully. Due to the drift, of course. Yes. Solid badminton from nine. Chen Yufei. Maneuvering her opponent around the court in all four corners. Great array of shots. Very controlled player, Chen Yufei. Shot. Beautiful shot by Chen Yufei. Yeah, she looked to be playing something straight. 14, Seeing I was expecting the straight nine. clear, but yeah, she, it's very, very efficient to cross back. Of course, Pai had to move a bit towards the backhand side to cover for the straight shots, and that left a gap in her short forehand side. She's adapted to uh, the drift, Chen Rufei. She's playing well at the moment. 10, 14. Yeah, she seems a little more happy now, second half of this second game, to use the rear court more um, positively. We saw a few lifts and clears that were fairly short earlier on in this game. 
And that's one of the worst things that can happen that you become scared of playing um, to the baseline. There's both a little bit of a drift alongside the court, but also the sideways drift, as you mentioned. Um, there's actually um, four different corners. They're all 15, different in terms of um, meteorology, if you could say that. The backhand corner of Chenu Fei is the corner where you have the most trouble putting it long. Um, you can sometimes put them long in Chenu Fei's forehand corner pies backhand corner it's really really difficult to keep the shuttle in because it can both go long and drift Service wide over. whereas you have a little bit 15. better um, possibility of hitting it to the uh, forehand to the long forehand corner of pie you pull but all four corners have different wind conditions yes. so to speak Ten. so being able to manage that and Quickly. and adjust your shots and shot selection in game that is a tough Hi. task and that is in many ways um, one of the things that separates the uh, good players from the uh, masters well steen that's the first time that i've found a real need to hear from a weatherman at a major tournaments I think exactly we, I think we found a new role for somebody to come in and talk about and I can tell you that um, 16 former Chinese 11. coach Li Mao who was also coaching uh, Malaysia Indonesia and, and Korea he, he was a smoker and um, one of the benefits of that was that he had a lighter and, and ahead of the matches he might sometimes walk around the court with his lighter on and see how the flame behaved clever idea it's amazing. I thought you were about to tell me he'd sit oh. at the back of the court smoking Service a cigarette order. to see where the smoke might go, well, but uh, not 16. ideal, not no. a good advert whatsoever. No, that, that was only practice. <laughs> Just practice, yes, of course. Oh, great battle at the net from these two there. Pai Yu Po coming out on top. Racket head speed from Paiu Podestin, so quick. Yeah, and, and that's the solution for her. She needs to attack because if she doesn't attack, then Chen Fei will play uh, downwards to her unless she's in really, really good uh, position and can control her clears. So so you got to attack on, on both sides of the court when there's um, drifty conditions. And as we mentioned before, there is some drift here. It's not that significant. It won't ruin play as we sometimes see it in, in certain holes where everything 17, tactically 13. is about the drift uh, because if you can't cope with that you have no chance whatsoever the worst world championships in terms of drift that i've experienced was in anaheim in 2005 where it was extremely windy conditions and the wind was changing all the time the style of players who did well there was very, very significant. USA got there so far only world champions in men's doubles with Tony Gunavan and Howard Bach. Great play again by uh, Chen Ufei. Yeah, staying 18, in control 13. of that rally and able just to force that winning opportunity. Very easy in the end by Yupo. Very limited options, but a player of backhand cross net there or a very short lift potentially Chen Yufei just dictating what's happening at the moment in some of these rallies again 19, this uh, 13. cross back at a cross shot from uh, Payupo cross clear and Yufei almost makes it look effortless. Such quality in these shots, and she makes it look so easy. Yeah, as you said, she, she's very economical in, in her game.
Well, Pai Yu Po just seemingly 13. crumbling under the pressure, the relentless pressure that is simply quality shot making and movement from Chen Yu Fei. And we're back to what is now match point for Chen Yu Fei serving at 2013. Well, Chen Yufei going for something a little special to finish. 14, Double punch clear into the backhand corner of Pai Yu Po, but she didn't quite execute the second well enough. Pai Yu Po serving, having saved one match point. Game. Well, it's all over for Pai Yu Po. Chen Yufei with a smash down the line. Good match. Her coach showing us that it's just business as usual. The expectation on Chen Yufei to have got through this round. Match won by Chen Yufei, 21-13, 21-14. Thank you. And a very solid performance from Chen Yufei. Straight games over Pai Yupo of Taipei. That scoreline there, 21-13, 21-14. So the winner of that match, Chen Yufei, she will be facing the winner of another women's singles. We'll see later here live in a few match time. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of that women's singles. The Celtic Way next to Celtic Park. We're in the Emirates Arena next door for day two of the Total 2017 BWF World Championships. What a performance we just saw. Chen Yufei of China coming through the women's singles into round three now. Our next match up, men's singles. It's Bryce Levedez from France. He's up against a man that needs no introduction, really, Lee Chong Wei. Well, this is the very bottom of the 64 strong men's singles draw. Bryce Levedez, Lee Chong Wei, and potential op opponents coming through round one. If things go their way, take a look there at hands, Christian Wittinghus. Tian Hao Wei could be one of those two. We'll see later on in the tournament, but for now, let's focus on this match. Bryce 